Hello students, welcome to my class. This is Professor Vicente Sire, and this is the presentation of part one of chapter nine. Uh, chapter nine, plant assets, natural resources, and intangibles. In chapters one through five, we talked about different accounting principles and the application of those principles and we talk about how to prepare the financial statement. So we talk about the financial statement preparation process. So that was chapters one through five. In chapters six, seven, eight, we zero in on specific issues in the assets section of the balance sheet, specifically current assets. We talk about merchandise inventory, we talk about cash, and we also talk about receivables. Now in chapter nine, we are shifting gear and we are zeroing in on the non-current assets of the asset session of the balance sheet. So as you know, the current assets are those assets uh, consist of cash and any assets that we can use up or that can be converted to cash within a year period or within the operating cycle of the company, whichever is longer. So we talk about that a great deal in, our pre in the previous chapter. Now, for non-current assets, we said that those are assets that have a long late uh, life. In other words, those are assets that have more than one year uh, or more than the operating uh, cycle uh, that lasts more than the operating cycle of the company. So from that standpoint, chapter 9 talks about three different types of non-current assets. Number one, plant assets. Number two, natural resources. And number three, intangible uh, assets. So, uh, from that standpoint, just like uh, other chapters, we said that uh, the five main issues that we are going to zero in on are learning the accounting principles or the accounting rules relating to plant assets, natural resources, and intangibles, how to apply those uh, accounting rules or principles, and the end result of the application of those rules is the preparation of uh, financial statements. In this case, uh, the balance sheet. Then, of course, we communicate the information thereof to internal and external users. And ultimately, we will analyze uh, the, the financial statements or figure out exactly what the numbers uh, mean. Now, moving along. Let's take a look at the learning objectives of this chapter. Number one, we are going to talk about how to measure cost of plant assets. Number two, we are going to talk about how to record or account for depreciation uh, using different methods. Number three, we are going to talk about how to make journal entries for the disposal of plant assets. We are going to talk about how to account or how to record natural resources and also intangible assets. Then we are going to use a, a, a assets turnover ratio as a technique to evaluate the business performance or to help us analyze uh, the information that we have prepared. So let's take a look at the learning objective number one measuring the cost of plant assets. Now the question is, uh, what are plant assets? We said these are long-lived tangible assets used in the operation of the uh, business. So a couple of uh, issues here, maybe three issues here that you need to, we need to zero in on. Number one, we said long-lived. So these are assets that usually uh, have more than one year useful life, for, for example, equipment or furniture. Number two, we said tangible assets. In other words, these are assets that have physical substance. 
Again, like furniture and feature, you can touch them. And number three, this access has to be used in the operation of the business. So I want you to be mindful of these three uh, uh, issues. Now, here are some of the examples of plant access. Number one, land, buildings, equipment, furniture, automobiles. Now, let's take a look at some of the rules uh, in connection with the uh, plant asset vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis how to determine the cost of a plant asset. Here is the general rule. We said that the actual cost of a plant asset is his purchase price plus all the cost necessary to get the assets ready for his intended use. Now, what does that mean? That simply means that the cost of a plant asset consists of the invoice price plus every related cost or expense that we incur to put it into its intended use. So let me give you an example. Let's assume that here in Chicago we have a company and we decided to place an order for an equipment from New York. And the cost of the equipment is $10,000. So the question is, what is the cost of the equipment? It consists of the $10,000 invoice price plus transportation plus installation at the whole nine years. So every related expense of getting it ready for its intended purpose is part of the cost of the equipment. So let's take a look at uh, an example here. In this case, land. The question is, how do we determine the cost of the land? We said it is the purchase price or the invoice price plus the brokerage commission, survey and legal fees, delinquent property taxes, title transfer, so on and so forth. Let me just go ahead and uh, emphasize a couple of uh, uh, these uh, uh, issues or these uh, costs uh, relative to land. Number one, delinquent property taxes. What does that mean? This is a situation whereby you are interested in buying a piece of land and the seller said the land is $100,000. And you say, well, that is fine. I pay you $100,000. Then before closing, we realized that the seller has not paid property tax for about four years. And the cost of the property tax is $20,000. And the seller said, I'm not interested in paying that. I just want you to pay me $100,000. Since you are desperate to have that piece of land, then you are now obligated to take care of the $20,000. So the cost of the piece of land is not only $10,000, it also consists of the delinquent property tax that the seller has not paid. Now, take a look at the last bullet, the cost of removing old building. So if you have an old structure on that piece of land, and you're really interested in using that land for a specific purpose, then you might have to pay a company to get rid of that uh, old structure or building. And that becomes part of the cost of the land. Now, let's take a look at uh, additional issues relative to cost of the land. It is important for you to know here that the cost of the land does not include fencing, paving, sprinkler system, lightning, signs. These costs are also referred to as land improvement. So land improvement is another type of asset. So we have an account. So if you have a situation whereby you have to fence and pave and install sprinkler system, you now have to go ahead and keep track of these costs in a separate account called uh, land improvements. So, Moving along, uh, oh, by the way, let's go back to the cost of land. It is important for you to know here that land is not subject to depreciation. We are going to talk about depreciation uh, in great detail uh, in a few minutes. So land is not subject to depreciation. Why? Because one of the reasons why we compute depreciation for other plant assets is because they are subject to wear and tear. For example, if you buy furniture, uh, equipment, or a building, eventually they are subject to wear and tear. That is one of the reasons why we calculate depreciation. But for land, 
Actually, land is not subject to wear and tear, hence, it is not subject to depreciation. More on that eventually. So, moving along, let's take a look at the application of some of the rules or some of the principles that we just talked about. Here's an example. Smart Touch Learning purchases land on August 21st, 2015 for $50,000 with a note payable. Other costs related to these transactions include $4,000 in delinquent property taxes, $2,000 in transfer taxes, $5,000 to remove an old building, and $1,000 survey fee. The additional costs are paid in cash. So the additional costs are paid in cash. However, the buyer issued a $50,000 note payable. So the question is, what is the cost of the land? The cost of the land, like we said, here is the accounting principle. It is the purchase price plus every related cost uh, that you incur to put the asset into its intended use. In this case, the property tax transfer taxes, removal of building survey. So the $12,000 related cost plus the $50,000, we wind up with $62,000. So that is the cost of the land. Now, moving along, let's take a look at how we make the journal entry. We debit land for $62,000. Of course, land is an asset. Land went up, we have more land. And we credit note payable for $50,000. And we credit cash for $12,000 because we cover $12,000. Now, let's take a look at the cost of buildings. When a building is constructed, sometimes you have a company construct a building if they have a need for one, or sometimes they just buy one. So when a building is constructed, the question is, the cost includes all of these, the site, the excavation, the building permits, contractor charges, materials and labor, so on and so forth. However, if the building is purchased, the cost includes the purchase price, the renovation cost, the brokerage fee, and every other cost that you spend uh, to get the building ready for its intended use. The cost of machinery and equipment and furniture and features, the costs include all of these. Again, the invoice price, the same generic rule uh, in terms of measuring the cost of a plant asset is applicable to all these plant assets. So that would be the end of uh, part one presentation of chapter nine.